calls for more Barbadians to get involved in chicken farming. A desperate father seeks help for his gravely ill daughter. Broadcasting from our studios in the Pine St. Michael, this is CBC News Night, starting now. And very good evening to you. I'm Lisa Broom. Thank you so much for tuning in. In our top story tonight, more small chicken farmers are needed. That's the view of Minister of Agriculture, Food and Nutritional Security in Darwir. He says more people need to get into chicken farming to help the country meet the high demand for poultry products. Minister Weir made the call while delivering the feature address at the Barbados Agricultural Society's annual General Assembly at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Centre. We will not encourage people to participate if they feel that it is all gloom and doom. But you will find more people coming forward if the conversation is saying, no matter how much chicken we produce, you can't get enough. This is a time for people to grow more chickens. Just like the pigtails, you remember there was a time in Barbados when barbecue pigtails came up? Everybody wanted to sell barbecue pigtails and people were lining up to purchase them. It depends on the conversation. So that if we are telling Barbados, and this is a fact, we need more small farmers growing chickens. Minister Weir adds the Barbados Agricultural Development and Marketing Corporation has been tasked with the responsibility to help small poultry farmers get their products on the market. We have agreed with the BADMC that they will look at a mechanism to see how many small farmers they can facilitate and that they will take up to a certain percentage, just like we're going to do for crop production so that you don't have to struggle to find market space. While addressing the Assembly, Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Agricultural Society, James Paul, shared the news that the 180 pregnant heifers being imported to help increase domestic milk production will arrive on the island in early December. He says two farmers will be traveling to Canada early next month to hand pick the heifers that will immediately go into quarantine before being transported to the island. That process is ongoing and we are working assiduously on it in terms of getting it going. In that way, we should see landed at the airport, and I know the minister is going to be there, 180 heifers, NKF heifers coming into Barbados. Okay? And I, I please give, 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 give every whole effort a success. I think it deserves. Okay? It is not something that it should be slighted. It shows the level of contributions and the work that we continue to do in terms of the promotion of this sector. Mr. Paul is thanking the Minister of Agriculture for helping to make the importation of the heifers possible. Government continues to provide ways for economic enfranchisement for Barbadians by ensuring that policies and programs are put in place to empower the average man. Word of this from Minister uh, in the Prime Minister's office with responsibility for culture, Senator Dr. Chantal Munro-Knight. Senator Munro-Knight, however, laments that many Barbadians are not taking advantage of the countless opportunities being created by government for their own upward social mobility. She made the remark as she addressed the strategic panel discussion on Dr. Derek Murray's research on economic empowerment, food security and business. We have thousands of Barbados, I think we have about 200,000 Barbadians or so that have participated in the National Training Initiative, signing on to free courses, free courses that the government is offering so that you can then uplift your, your education in practical ways, so this is not about academia, but in practical ways, again, so that you can make pathways and new pathways that are opening up. When I go on the block in St. Lawrence or in Pegwell or any way within the, within, the, within the community that I am in, the majority of young men, the majority of those that we would call dispossessed and disenfranchised, don't see the pathways that the state is making. They're not participating. Senator Monroe Knight says one such avenue which government was hoping Barbadians would have tapped into and reaped the economic benefits was the lucrative renewable energy sector. The government had moved, um, I believe it was in 2022, 
to begin to talk about the notion of rights of people, for instance, to participate in the renewable energy sector, a sector that traditionally and that will traditionally be captured again by large monopolies and seeking to make sure that the average Barbadian within their homes could also participate in a sector that was emerging as one of the big profit sectors globally. And we thought to be able to look for a way by which then we could um, remove that monopoly and make space for the average person. And so that we have done that. Others appealing to Barbadians to help him raise funds to take his seven-year-old daughter overseas for a liver transplant. The child, who has been battling a medical condition which is affecting her liver and other parts of her body, needs to get the transplant done as soon as possible. We hear more from Anesta Henry. Time is running out for seven-year-old Amaya Holmes Yearwood to get a liver transplant. But her father, Ryan Yearwood, who is struggling to make ends meet, cannot finance the estimated $250,000 procedure in Colombia. With Amaya sitting on his lap, struggling to hold back his tears, Mr. Yearwood says it's difficult watching the health of his child who is battling end-stage liver disease deteriorate. He says he is hopeful Amaya, who has spent most of her life thus far being sick, gets help. Right now, her last time she went into the um, hospital for her stool, blood into her stools, and she got some blood transfusion, two blood transfusion done, um, um, a esophageal scope, where the, the scope went through her, her, um, her throat, where they could go down and see what's going on in there. And they were saying, well, there's bleeding, slight bleeding, so they tried to ban, but they could only do so much. And they find that her stomach area is really bloated and it's getting harder and painful. More, a little more painful for her at times when she has to move around and stuff. The father of five says his daughter, who often tells him that she just wants to get better to play, attend school on a regular basis, and do what other children do, was diagnosed with the health condition at 11 weeks old. He says doctors have informed him that they can only treat Amaya's symptoms as best as they possibly can until she receives the transplant. The doctors have said that she would have, they don't, um, might not have made it to at least three years old, but she's defying the odds and she's fighting on because she says she wants to live and she wants to be a nurse or a doctor that she can help people. The family has approached the QEH in the past for assistance. We would like her to get at least a little GoFundMe going on, something that would help bring in some funds that we could get our passports and stuff in order so that she could get a chance even if we um, could f go there in Colombia. Amaya lost her mother Sharyan Holmes to a severe asthma attack last December as well as her nine-month-old sister earlier that year. Anesta Henry, CBC News. A man has died after being stabbed during a relative's viewing at a funeral home and a male family member is in custody assisting with investigations into the matter. Police say around 5.40 yesterday evening, the now deceased 63-year-old Trevor DeVere Bradshaw of 3rd Avenue, Deans Village, Hinesbury Road, St. Michael. Family members and others were at the Paramount Funeral Home to view the body of his brother, the late Irwin Bradshaw. A dispute occurred inside the funeral home and continued on the outside where it turned violent, resulting in Trevor Bradshaw receiving two stab wounds to his torso. He was taken to the QEH via private motor vehicle where he succumbed to his injuries. Police say 42-year-old Romel Andre Williams, son of the late Erwin Bradshaw of ED Village Christchurch, is in custody assisting with their investigations. The Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting concluded in Samoa with leaders reaffirming their commitment to tackling global, economic, environmental and security challenges. Barbados was represented by Prime Minister Mia Amor Montley. Countries have also adopted the Apia Commonwealth Ocean Declaration for One Resilient Common Future, 
which calls on all Commonwealth nations to protect and restore the ocean in the face of severe climate change, pollution and impacts related to over-exploitation. Key aspects of the declaration include recognition of national maritime boundaries in the face of sea level rise and the urgent finalization of the Global Plastics Treaty. Commonwealth Secretary General, the Right Honourable Patricia Scotland, says the progress made with the Blue Charter that underpins the declaration helps member states rise to today's climate challenges and seize tomorrow's opportunities. Antigua and Barbuda was announced as the incoming chair in office and host country for the next Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. Students of the Lawrence T. Gay Primary now have a greater knowledge of dental hygiene. The comment came from Shondette White of Massey Distribution as the school received the first place prize in the Listerine Smart Kids Primary Competition. Open to students from classes 2 to 4, participating schools were presented with paint kits and garbage cans to be painted. Ms. White says the competition was keenly contested and brought out the creativity in the participants. Congratulations to the students, the staff, the principal of Lawrence Tigay. You did a fantastic job. I will tell you that all of the judges were actually touched when they saw the cans, when they saw the poems, when they saw the clarity, the storyline behind it. So kids, don't doubt yourself. Don't, you're not like me, you're all artists in one way or another. And congratulations again for doing an excellent job, okay? Give yourselves a clap. Great job. We'll take a break here. When we come back, we'll have the weather and sports. Sports time. Good evening. I'm Damien Best. We start with some cricket news. Opener Evan Lewis blazed his way to an unbeaten century to give the West Indies a consolation. Eight wicket victory in today's rain hit third and final one international against Sri Lanka. Five hours were lost at Palakiri due to rain, reducing it to a 23 over contest. Sent into bat, Sri Lanka had posted 156 for three before the Duckworth Lewis Stern method revised the target, leaving the Wendy's chasing 195 to win. Both Pathuna Sank and Kusal Mendes struck 56 runs apiece. Lewis then left spectators in awe as the Wendy's reached their target on 196 for two with six balls to spear. The left hander smashed the winning runs to finish unbeaten on 102 of 61 deliveries with nine fours and four sixes. And he shared in an unbeaten 88-run third wicket partnership with Shafin Rutherford. Rutherford made 50 not out, his third consecutive half century as Sri Lanka take the series 2-1. Back at home, Maradon Ben struck an unbeaten century as Spartan took the upper hand against BCA Youth on the penultimate day of Series 6 in the BCA Elite Division today. Ben struck 123 not out as Spartan declared on 339 for 5 at Waterford A in reply to 252 scored by the youth. At Stumps, the youth were 39 without loss in their second innings, trailing by 48 runs. Meanwhile, half centuries from Wanderers captain Craig Barthwood and Jared Lovell set the stage for a strong reply from the hosts against UWI at Dells Road. Wanderers racked up 300 for six declared in reply to UE's first inning score of 193. Barthwood hit five fours and two sixes in his unbeaten 66 or 51 balls while Lovell top scored with a masterful 72, inclusive of 11 fours. Shaquan Kay finished with four for 105. Here's some of the early action. Wanderers replied to UWI's first innings of 193. They melt Evelyn to Roshan Primus, playing across the line and struck on the pad. And given the host at this stage, 137 for three, Primus made just four. Evelyn full of confidence to Gerard Lovell now, and he's driven through the covers for four. Welcome runs. Wanderers looking good. Slog sweep from Lovell off. Shaquan Cave is executed to perfection. And that's another boundary. The new man, Tevin Walcott, can count his lucky stars. Flashes at this one. But put down at slip. Could that prove costly? Well, it wasn't actually. Evelyn had him walking back a few minutes later for just six. Into the lap of Jonathan Carter at short. 153 now for four. Cave aiming to... Prize out another, but Lovell equal to the task. Cuts this one beautifully. Seven away from a half century now. Lovell was the rock, but the others look baffled. A prod forward by Joshua Morris. Appeal and out LBW for a duck. 160 for five. A wealth of experience in the West Indies test captain, Craig Bathwick. And he knows how to work the ball around. Four runs through the third man region. 
Lover would eventually reach his half century. Just a tickle around the corner and collects a couple. Well played indeed, 183 now for five. Lovell seeing it like a breadfruit goes over the top. One bounce, four. No bowler was spared. Tremaine Dorich to Lovell. Hit with disdain through extra cover. The chase is to retrieve, nothing else. Then the audacity to go for the reverse. Goodness me, that was out of the modern day manual. 199 on the board. And with a first in his lead, Wanderer started to lay more building blocks. Bathwick straight as a die, add four more. Eventually, Wanderers reaching 226 for six at the tee break. For UWI in reply, we're 102 for two at the close, trailing by five runs, heading into tomorrow's final day. Over at Beckles Road, Empire lead host YMPC by 93 runs. Scores there, Empire 160 and 54 for two. YMPC 121 with Jamel Warwick and taking 5 for 28. At Rice's host Gadiola are leading ESA field Pickwick by 70 runs. Scores in that one, Gadiola 210 and 39 for 4. Pickwick 179 with Javante de Pisa taking 5 for 50. At the SJPIT ground, home side Wildey have a 203 run lead over Yorkshire. Scores Wildey 252 for 4 declared and 90 for 2. Yorkshire 139 with Desmond Currency taking 6 for 53. And this one just before we go, Barcelona thrashed Real Madrid 4-0 in El Clasico this evening to extend their lead to six points at the top of La Liga. Yeah, four hot ones, what a scoreline. That is it for sports tonight. Kerry has the weather up next. Good evening and welcome to the weather news. Well, the rich pattern was the dominant feature today. As a result, we had fair to partially cloudy skies, only a few passing showers. We do have a trough system uh, impacting the area at this time. As a result, we are expecting some showers later on tonight. Meanwhile, those winds across the region, they are light to moderate. They're peaking at 90 knots and convergence maintained some showers across Guyana. The maximum temperature today was 31 degrees Celsius, the minimum 29 degrees. At present, the temperature stands at 28 degrees Celsius. The relative humidity 80%, which means moisture is building here in Barbados, and those winds are coming in from the east. We take a look now at our satellite feed, where the ridge pattern maintained mainly dry and stable weather conditions for us here in Barbados today. We had fair to partially cloudy skies, only a few passing showers. We had up to 4.2 millimeters of rainfall. Now, moisture ahead of a trough system maintained some showers during the evening hours here in Barbados. We are expecting that the system will impact us later on tonight. As a result, we can expect a mix of clear and cloudy skies along with some scattered showers. Now the winds across the region, they are light to moderate. They're peaking at 90 knots and those seas moderate in open water with swells peaking at 1.5 meters. Further south, we do have convergence there, maintaining some showers over Guyana. Over now in the Western Caribbean, a sheer line maintained showers today over Jamaica as well as Puerto Rico. That's our first look at the weather. Off to the break, we'll have the forecast. Welcome back. In the forecast for tomorrow, the sun is expected to rise at 5.51 and will set at 5.33. The first high tide is expected at 16 minutes past midnight and the first low at 10 minutes to 7 in the morning. Now those seas, smooth to moderate in open water, with swells peaking at 1.5 meters, the winds coming in from the east, and they're peaking at 30 kilometers per hour. For us here in Barbados tonight, that trough system will be impacting the island. As a result, we can expect a mix of clear and cloudy skies, along with some scattered showers. Over the next three days, a mix of sunshine, clouds, and showers can be expected. Well, that's our news for tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. Good night.